Islam is theologically incoherent. And I believe it's theologically incoherent in many ways, but we're going to look at one way that Islam is theologically incoherent. In other words, you just cannot make sense of this. It's not a matter of interpreting things in a certain way. There is no way that this can possibly make sense to anyone. And the only way you can avoid this complete, inconsistent, illogical incoherence is to just ignore it and not to pay attention to it. But that's not what we do. We want to, be, we want to pay attention to it uh, to see whether it's a true revelation, and there's no way this can be a true revelation. So let's kind of go rapid fire through some points, and these are going to kind of add up um, to something that cannot possibly make sense. Sam, yes, sir. there are people out there, if we quote Jesus to them, they will say, who cares what Jesus says? Are Muslims in a position to say, I don't care what Jesus says? Definitely not, because Jesus is one of the five greatest messengers and prophets that the Quran says Allah has raised up for, for the salvation of mankind, specifically Israel. And the Quran itself says, that we need to go back and examine what Jesus says in the gospel that God sent down to Jesus, chapter 5, verse 47. So no, Muslims can't. Now, was Jesus unsuccessful? Jesus is going around preaching a message. Was he unsuccessful, or did he actually win followers who converted to Islam at his preaching? Well, the Quran says that Jesus' followers were Muslims. Mm -hmm. That's, so he won yeah. followers. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 52, mm -hmm. 5, 1, 11. It says that Jesus' followers were Muslims. And not only that, chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran, 355, and chapter uh, 61, 14 says, Allah swore to Jesus, his followers would be dominant, uppermost from the time of Jesus' ascension into heaven till the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's his, his promise to Jesus. And 61, 14 records the fulfillment of the promise by saying that those who believe Jesus were given victory over the disbelievers and they became dominant. So Jesus is a good Muslim. He preaches to his followers, and Allah promises Jesus that those followers are going to be victorious until the day of resurrection. Yep. And the Quran says that this was fulfilled. These followers did win until they took over. Exactly. They did. Sam, do we have any record anywhere of Jesus' Muslim followers? <laughs> None whatsoever. The record we have are the New Testament documents that come from the followers of Jesus, but they were anything but Muslim. So, if a Muslim wants to say Jesus had Muslim followers, it's pretty clear these Muslim followers didn't last very long, right? In other words, if, Je if Jesus had Muslim followers who were going to be victorious until the day of resurrection and whom Allah helped and strengthened until they actually became uppermost over those who rejected Jesus. Obviously, we're going to find those guys in the first century, in the second century, in the third we century, in the fourth century, in the fifth century, yeah. in the sixth century, and so on, right? We have to. Until no the choice. day of resurrection. Exactly. And it's, the, re the resurrection day is not here yet, so we have to find them. So according to history, and I mean historical fact, right? If, if a Muslim wants to say there were... Muslim followers of Jesus in the first century and all records of their existence were wiped out. Well, we couldn't refute that, right? We couldn't, we couldn't say, yeah, no, there we were. We can't there refute were, it, yeah. no, historically. Right. Possibly, if, yeah. yeah. So if you said there were followers who weren't helped and who were wiped out and we have no record of their existence, we could not refute that. But Allah doesn't say, Allah no. doesn't say, Jesus, you have followers, and those followers are going to be wiped out immediately, and the Apostle Paul is going to come along, and he's going to corrupt the message, and then a false version of Christianity is going to spread around that has no resemblance to what you taught. That's not what Allah says. In fact, here, just so the people can hear the verse for themselves, 61.14, who won? 61.14. O you who believe, be helpers of Allah, as said Jesus, son of Mary, to the disciples. Who will be my helpers of Allah? Said the disciples, we are Allah's helpers. Then a portion of the children of Israel disbelieved and a portion dis uh, believed. A portion believed and a portion disbelieved. But we gave, we Allah gave power to those who believed against their enemies and they became the ones that prevailed. Mm -hmm. So Sam, according to the Quran, according to Allah and the Quran, the followers of Jesus who won were the true followers of Jesus. Definitely. The true followers of Jesus were the ones who, are, who, would, who became victorious, exactly. who became superior. Exactly. And they would be so until the day of resurrection. Now, Sam, we happen to know, historically, who became uppermost in Christianity? So much so that they're, they're the only real Christians we have records of. Who, what, what, what? The Christians who actually became uppermost in Christianity, who actually became uppermost over their enemies in any, in any real sense? And whose message is still flourishing and dominating till this day? 
are the apostles such as Peter, John, and Paul, whom Muslims like to vilify, Paul, whom the Lord Jesus used to give us half the New Testament, Paul, who by inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote 13 of the 27 New Testament books, that message, conquered, prevailed, continues to prevail and spread throughout the entire world like wildfire. And so, according to the Quran, Allah helped the true followers of Jesus yes. until they became uppermost. But the ones, the Christians who actually became uppermost, were Christians who preached Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity. That he is God in the flesh, the eternal Son of the Father. So, the message that ultimately became uppermost is a message that contradicts the Quran completely. 100%. And yet that's the message that Allah helped spread across the world according to the Quran. You can't, you can't uh, deny it. You can't, there's no way around this dilemma. Yeah. It's clearly in the Quran. And it's even, if, if, this is a Yusuf Ali translation. If you go to his commentary on chapter 61, verse 14, he says that Christians becoming uppermost refers to Christians taking over the Roman Empire. Exactly. Sam, did the Christians who took over the Roman Empire... Mm. They believe in Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity? They believe that Christ was the eternal God, the eternal Son of the Father, who became flesh, died, rose physically bodily, ascended to sit at God's right hand as King of kings and Lord of lords, and will return physically bodily as King of kings and Lord of lords. Mm -hmm. So, Muslims, uh, you've got a horrible theological problem here, namely that Allah says the true Christians are going to take over, but the true Christians who took over totally contradict the message of Islam. So if those are the true followers of Jesus, then Islam is false. And if they're not the true followers of Jesus, well, then Allah was wrong and Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. But it gets worse because suppose a Muslim wants to say, well, I'll just ignore all of that. It's very embarrassing that Allah said this is going to happen and it didn't happen. Uh, and a Muslim wants to stick with the claim that the gospel has been corrupted. Notice. Part of the gospel message that took over in Christianity was that Jesus died by crucifixion. That is foundational to Christianity, is it not, Sam? 100%, yes. Foundational. Can Muslims say that the Apostle Paul or the Council of Nicaea invented the doctrine of Jesus' death by crucifixion? Uh, if they do say that, then they have a problem because then that means that the true followers of Christ not only were vanquished, their message was destroyed. So in what sense could the Quran talk about a victory of Jesus' mm -hmm. followers if it doesn't include their very message? Mm -hmm. Because the point of them being victorious is that their message would dominate over against the false teachings. Even more disturbing, Sam. Where did the Christians get the idea that <laughs> Jesus died by crucifixion? Allah. Because Allah made it appear unto the Jews that they had killed Jesus by crucifixion. Chapter 4, verse 157. It quotes the Jews at Muhammad's time as boasting, saying, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. They neither killed him nor crucified him, but it so appeared unto them. Mm -hmm. So think about this. Allah promises that Jesus' true followers are going to take over. And we know that the true followers who took over in Christianity, who became uppermost in Christianity, taught something fundamentally different from what the Quran teaches. That would be embarrassing enough, but even more embarrassing for you Muslims is that the message was corrupted by the one who said he would protect the message. Yep. Allah. He corrupted it. Jesus didn't die, but Allah tricked and deceived people into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion, thus starting the Christian message. Very, very interesting. And my friends, as I pointed out, there's just no making sense of it. <laughs>